Hello, my boy. Welcome, Whiskey Fam. So, this is going to be the definitive guide on Foxy versus Anastasia. Now, why are we going over these two units? I'm sure everybody's already asking and wants to know. Uh, the two units that are often the most compared is Anastasia and Foxy. Uh, before Anastasia was released, Foxy was the go-to warrior. Um, I would say that she's better than Eden uh, and many others. Uh, simply because she is very flexible and she is a skipper. Uh, as everybody knows and experienced in PvP, skippers are pretty much the premium. Um, the problem with Foxy has always been very simple. She is an insane investment. She's basically um, useless until she gets plus ten, a uh, plus nine actually. Sorry, because of the need of the double tiles. She does her job, or she can be used at plus six. Before plus six, it's very difficult to use her mainly because her damage is reduced by so much. So, at plus six your runes and other things and your buffs do compensate enough for her to actually deal damage and kill what you need to kill. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about why Foxy is amazing specifically so everybody understands. The first thing is, let's look at her plus nine because that's what matters. Foxy is an amazing unit because at plus nine, she gets double tile. Second, she's multi-hit, so she is the Lucius killer other than Wilhelmina, but just talking about specifically skippers. Two, she does additional damage, DOT over time, which is actually very significant because this is what will cause her to be able to kill a lot of units. Most of the time, uh, DPS units are unable to kill tanky units, but because she has this, she can deal with a seer and other unit as well. The bomb counter <clears throat> deals a damage, additional damage upon enemy normal attack. She also has a counter. So... Between the fact that she is able to have Nullifier, which removes counter, so let's say, for example, you have an Aaron. Normally, Wilhelmina will instantly die to an Aaron. Why? Because he has a Reflect Counter Shield. Nullifier will take that away, and you are safe. So that basically does a lot. Prevents healing, prevents shields, prevents counters, all that stuff. And that's why she's so flexible, because it's very hard to kill her, unless it's a bomb, right? based on her own damage. Two, her counter will oftentimes save you because it can trade with another warrior over time. Three, this will guarantee it kills Aaron's even at high skill levels, as well as Seer's and other tanky units. Lastly, the multi-hit is amazing. So, now that we understand what her skills are, we can then look at the other unit, which is Anastasia. Now, what makes Anastasia amazing is that she is a fucking bomb. She hits like a truck like you won't believe. And as Foxy requires assault runes to increase her damage, Anastasia requires crit damage runes, right? So she uses double crit damage runes. Why? Simple. If you look at her skill sets, it's very obvious. At plus nine... She does incoming damage increase. It's after normal attack, so this does not help her first attack. So anyone attacking those units that she has hit after the fact will basically kill, almost, because it's increasing by 60%. That is usually strong enough. Two, she removes barrier-type skills. This means that counter reflex will not work. This means that Aaron will not work. So it protects you from Aaron. As you can see, it is pretty much safe. <clears throat> so... She will not trade with an Aaron, which is very important because as you get to later game, Aaron's become very common, and that is something you have to concern yourself with, as well as Jin and other similar units like, oh, per se, Foxy. So you are also safe from Foxy. So the three units that you're going to really look out for is Foxy, Jin, and Aaron. Those are the main ones that you really care about. So she is safe from them. She does not trade. She simply destroys. Now, moving on. Intensive bombardment. What does that mean? That means that she hits an insane amount of damage. Why? Because she deals an additional 200% damage after the initial damage hits. So she's doing really 300% damage to a single unit. And that unit is the central unit right here in the middle. But 
if any of these four tiles are a warrior or support, then they also get dealt 300% damage. Otherwise, they get dealt with whatever she is. Okay? Lastly, the most important part of it, and why she must use crit damage runes. Crit damage runes will boost her crit rate. If you get two legendary ones, then 20 plus 25% boost. She basically is almost going to max out simply because of how amazing her crit damage is on her crit rate. Now, any one single supporter will likely bring her over the edge. Two is guaranteed and probably overkill, but if it increases her crit damage, and if you have a Valze, it's even better. Why? Because <clears throat> Valze needs crit damage buffs. So does Anastasia. So the more crit damage you give to both of these units, the more, the better they get. So there's a symbiotic relationship between them. If you have a Valze, you definitely want an Anastasia because your buffs are going to align. So that's why Anastasia is a great combo with her. Other than that, crit damage will still also increase her attack boost by 30%. As you can see, it is in your best interest to stack her with crit damage. Lastly, she has permanent stats weakening immunity. Why is this important? Simple. Anytime you get hit with a Seer, uh, you smack a Levia, you're getting cursed. This prevents that, which is very important because if you decrease her stats, she basically gets nerfed, and this is why she has that. While it is not the same as debuff immunity, it is quite important as well. <clears throat> so, this unit works very well with Laura, Veronia, and many others. Laura is even better. Why? Because she gives her the other side of it. This, uh, what do they call it? I'm sorry. The tech interference protection or immunity. So that means that if she's protected from curse, then Laura, when she buffs her, makes sure that she can still attack. So that's why between Valze, Laura, and Anastasia, it's a wonderful combo that many people use. Now, what is the difference besides, okay, one is a multi-hit, but then again, we do have Wilhelmina now. Okay, so why do we choose Anastasia versus Foxy? Foxy is what I would say is a much more flexible unit, but it does not guarantee a kill as well as Anastasia, if you look at their stats. Now, that being said, if either one hits a DPS line, it all blows up. So, based on that, especially now with Chopsticks being the standard uh, for what is around, you're going to kill three units versus two right you're gonna most likely deal insane amount of damage to their dps line if it lands there because either one they have to land a dps line to make it matter she's going to kill two dps's and usually if she kills the first unit it's likely a support so she will kill one support and two dps or two d two support and two dps whereas and well foxy will at most kill two dps or one support and one dps so just because of her tiles, there's so much more potential. And as the meta changes, you're going to learn that everybody's going to do crazy things because we're all getting better at the game. Right now, we're all just still, even at this point, at late game, struggling to get all of our units to the right skill ups. So that being said, she's only going to improve over time. And to give you statistics, so Korea, which is the oldest server, Foxy was the number... Uh, one compared to Anastasia a month ago. So one month ago, Anastasia was at highest three in the overall meta. And the reason why I say that is more likely because of one, it takes a long time for the general population of the game to, in to increase her skill ups to where she is at nine or 10. Two, obviously the meta is gonna change as it gets messier and crazier, tiles mean more. So if Anastasia has more tiles, that means she gets better. But what I can tell you is after she took the number one spot away from Foxy, as out of them too, she is now the better unit in that meta. So what this means is for the last four weeks, Wilhelmina is always number one because she is the pinnacle, um, specifically because she ignores incoming um, damage decreases from, let's say, a Mamo or Levia and stuff like that. And she deals with Lucius very well. So she's always number one. But number two has always been Foxy for many, many months. 
until Anastasia currently, for the last four weeks, has been solidly solid number two. So my suggestion is Anastasia and Foxy are both necessary, but it depends on the formation and the situation and what you need in your composition, obviously. But if we're looking at a vacuum of the two units, I would personally say that Anastasia is the better unit. Why? Because in a general situation, her tiles and her guaranteed damage output is going to trump Foxy. Simply because, as a power level, she is stronger. That doesn't mean that she completely overrides Foxy. There's going to be many situations where you have to use the Foxy over the Anastasia. But if you're going to do PvP, where you're just kind of like betting against the field, it's likely more beneficial to you to use Anastasia, especially if you find people just doing crazy things all over the place. Now, the last thing is progression. We have to keep in mind the difference. We spoke about Foxy initially, about how difficult she is because she sits in your box for literally two months if you don't get dupes or anything else, right? Because it takes from zero to get your first one to plus nine for her to be actually reaching the potential that you need her to be to be competitive in tier one combat. So that is the pain of having a Foxy. I can tell you from personal experience, I've had her sit in my box for a month and a half before I actually used her just because at the ELO I was at, even at plus six, seven, eight, it just doesn't matter because she doesn't have that second tile. You know, until she gets that second tile, she's basically garbage in my opinion if you're in the top rank ELO because you can't afford to use her since everybody else has a plus nine Foxy or better and other units that are better suited. So you cannot take that risk. Now, that is not the same for Anastasia. Anastasia is amazing because she trains or progresses like a Sigmund. Sigmund, with every skill book, becomes exponentially more powerful. But the problem is, in the overall scheme of things, he has a very low ceiling compared to a Anastasia or a Foxy. So Anastasia is like a Sigmund without that ceiling. She has literally the world as her oyster. So as you increase from one, she literally only increases her incoming damage, which is nice. But at plus three, she now gets her nullifier, right? So this really helps you to protect yourself from getting trades from Aaron, Jin, and other units like that that are super frustrating. At plus four and above, she becomes much more powerful, especially with her damage increasing significantly. At plus six, that's when she really starts hitting her stride because now she gets her attack boost and then everything else after that is history. She will just basically destroy and conquer. So if you were to ask me, what does this mean in comparison? Foxy is basically unusable in top tier until plus nine. Anastasia is usable in top tier at minimum, um, at minimum plus three, but realistically, I would say at plus six is when you're going to really feel like she's doing her job. So getting from plus zero to plus six with an Anastasia doesn't really hurt that much because you're still going to get a lot of value. So she has a straight incline in her power level, whereas Foxy is basically flatlined until she hits nine and then she just spikes like nobody's business, right? So you can likely use a plus three Anastasia if you are in the elo of, let's say, crystal or below. Anything up to crystal, plus three is going to still work. Anything from crystal to, let's say, um, <clears throat> sapphire, you're likely in the plus six range. After sapphire, you're really in the let's get to plus six and above, like eight, nine, and ten. So that's what we're talking about. So what does this mean at the end of the day? Well, the Foxy banner is gone already, so it doesn't matter. It really depends on like whether you want to pull it. Me, personally, um, I'm probably just going to mileage for her because I really don't like Antonio Banderas. So I will be skipping that banner most likely um, and just pulling on Legend pulls or other things and to get my mileage up and get her. Uh, I'm definitely going to get her, skill her up, and things like that. She is incredibly powerful. I personally prefer her over Foxy because I value her tiles immensely. Um, and plus, she just hits so hard that she can deal with many Mammos currently. Uh, Mammo right now is an amazing unit. She is nowhere near the norm being at plus six or above. So that means that Anastasia theoretically should be able to kill Mammo in one shot uh, with the proper build and all these other things. Just because no one's ready to have Mammo 
at that skill point where she has 300 plus percent shields or something like that. So, just to finish off, what do we do with Anastasia versus Foxy? My honest opinion, if you had options, is to do both. Um, if you had to pick one over the other, I'd probably tell you you should probably pick Fo uh, Anastasia because you can use her with much less pain in progression and sooner than you can realistically a Foxy. So at this point, when we first started the game, everybody used Foxy and had him sit in their box for three months. And then all of a sudden she's everywhere now. If Anastasia and Foxy are both around, I guarantee you Foxy's probably not getting used simply because of how hard it is to get her to the right skill levels that we all need. So moving forward, I think Anastasia is probably going to be much more common than Foxy's. Uh, that doesn't mean that Foxy is uh, going to be retired or unusable. It just means that her popularity is going to increase exponentially. I mean, Anastasia specifically. And that's all there is. Uh, people that do have plus on Foxy, me personally, I'll tell you this, I'm probably going to run a Wilhelmina Anastasia and Foxy as my three warriors. Um, if you have an Eden, I totally understand if you swap out a, a Foxy for an Eden. I probably won't. Um, I'd still prefer a Foxy over an Eden because, you know, I value in destroying their lines as soon as possible. Uh, Eden will do very well, but he doesn't get in. He doesn't penetrate. Uh, very often, you're going to see that maybe the, the worst unit they could put in the front is either a Mammo or a Velfern. And realistically, if you kill everything else, I could care less if they have a Mammo or Velfern in the front. I'm still going to win. So that's my opinion on it. Um, good luck on your polls. And that is it. So now you know. Between Anastasia and Foxy, personally, I would say in my opinion, and based on what is currently the meta in Korea and how easy it is to level her up, she is a superior unit. Overall, they are both excellent, and you should invest in both of them. Thanks a lot, guys. See you later.